Hello, welcome. My name is Alex Marrera. I'm with Alpha Star Academy, and we are going to be discussing the problem balancing bacteria, the third and final question of the January 2024 USCO Bronze Contest. Let's begin with a quick problem summary. We're given n integers in a line, and we want to determine the fewest number of operations required in order to turn all of those integers into zero. We're given two operations to do this, the increase operation and the decrease operation. The increase operation applied to index i increases the value at index i by 1. And then it increases the value at index i plus 1 by 2, i plus 2 by 3, and so on until it reaches the end of the array. The decrease operation works the same way, except instead you subtract 1, subtract 2, subtract 3, and so on. So notice that if I increase uh, index i, I will not only change index i, but I will actually change every index to the right of index i as well by an increasing amount. Um, so for example, if I increase index 0, that would increase the first element by 1, the second element by 2, the third element by 3, and so on until I reach the end of the array. So one big hint for this question is that n is equal to 200,000. This tells me that I really only get a constant number or perhaps a log n number of passes over my array. So what I want here is a very fast solution to this problem, and that is going to constrain the sort of algorithms available to me. So things like brute force here are probably off the table. And in fact, for these types of questions, oftentimes the right idea is going to lie in a greedy approach, right? So at each step in time, I'm going to make some optimal choice with complete disregard for future choices I'll be making. So let's take a look at a small example. Here I have an array of length three. The first number is negative one. The next number is three. And the next number is five. And one idea is that since the operations change the element and then everything to its right, if I want to make this whole array zero, the best thing to do is start by sorting out the leftmost element, then going to the second leftmost element, and then going on. So I always sort of correct the next leftmost element, and that way I never accidentally undo any of the progress I made in the past. So for example, if I want to turn this negative 1 into a 0, I have to apply the increase operation at index 0. So that's going to increase index 0 by 1. It's going to increase index 1 by 2. And it's going to increase index 2 by 3. So this will be the new state of my array after applying all of these operations. Then the next number I need to address is this 5 in position 1. So to get that to a 0, I need to apply the decrease operation at index 1 five times. Uh, so then this is going to not only change the element in index 1, it's also going to change the element in index 2. Right? For each one of these decrease operations, the element in index 2 is going to decrease by 2. So I'm going to get 8 minus 10 is negative 2. Now I just have one more number left to correct. And to increase this final element to 0, I need to apply the increase operation at index 2 two times for a total of eight operations. And this sort of greedy approach ends up being optimal. I'll leave that for you to prove. Uh, but let's see uh, if we can turn this idea into an algorithm. So we're going to begin with some sort of count. And we're going to loop through all of the elements from left to right. Then we're going to turn element i into 0, counting the number of operations required. So it'll be some number of increase operations or some number of decrease operations. right? So if element is i is 5, for example, I'll need 5 decrease operations. If element i is negative 7, I will need 7 increase operations. Then what I can do is I can loop over the rest of the array and update every value for how much they increased or decreased. Then I will print out the count, and I'll pass uh, up to 10 test cases. But there is a problem. I'm not going to pass all the test cases here, because we can see we have a nested loop, uh, both loops ranging over j. So this is going to be a runtime n squared algorithm, which is a little bit too slow to pass all of the test cases. 
So what can I do? Uh, is, is it lost? Well, oftentimes the right idea is to see if you can eliminate your innermost loop. So anytime you have a, a solution with a lot of nested loops and it's just slightly too slow, you should always ask yourself, is there a way I can get rid of this innermost loop? And the answer in this problem is yes, but you have to be a little bit clever about it. So how can we do better? We have to update the value of element J when we arrive there in the outer loop. So rather than uh, looping over the array every single time, we're just going to update uh, the element J when we arrive in the outer loop. So in order to make this work, we're going to have to sort of store a variable that has the um, total number of adjustments that have happened over time to see, OK, this lets me calculate the number of increases or decreases that have been applied to variable index 5. And then using that number, I'll be able to uh, calculate the number of increases and decreases that have happened to index 6. And then I'll be able to continue this on just keeping track of the total number of increase operations, and the total number of decrease operations, which will allow me to calculate uh, a cumulative effect on the array. So I'm going to eliminate this innermost loop by storing the increase operations and the decrease operations, and then calculating how much I need to adjust the grass total, um, where the grass total is just the, the integer uh, in the array. All right, so let's see if we can uh, calculate this formula. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a couple variables here. So we're going to have the number of increase operations, and we're going to have the number of decrease operations. So uh, as time goes on, these will increase. And then I'm going to have this variable called adjustment. So adjustment's going to start at 0. And over time, as the increase and decrease operations uh, increase, I will calculate the amount I need to add to each integer to account for sort of the previous operations I've applied to the array. So let's break this down and see how this could work. So let's once again take our example from up above and see what the adjustment needs to be. So here we can see that in the first operation, I use one increase operation. So Increase is 1, and my adjustment needs to be 2, right? So I need to adjust a 3 into a 5. So this is just a little bit of data that's going to point me in the right direction. Now let's take a look at the state of the array uh, when we're adjusting the third and final element. By this point in time, there have been one increase operations and two, uh, five decrease operations, rather. And what kind of adjustment do we need? Well, we need to go from five to negative two. So the adjustment we need is going to be negative seven. And there are some intuitive guesses we can start making at what the right formula for the adjustment might be. And the idea is every increase operation means that we should have to uh, have a positive adjustment. And every decrease operation means that we need a negative adjustment. So let's try this out. So we can take a guess at the formula for the adjustment. And this guess could be adjustment is equal to adjustment plus increase minus decrease, right? So Increase operations will mean I adjust, adjust positively because the array has increased. Decrease operations means I will adjust negatively because the array has decreased. If we apply this formula, we can see that it, it doesn't quite work for the first case, right? So adjustment starts at 0. So if we apply our formula, we calculate the adjustment as uh, 0 plus the number of increases minus the number of decreases, and we'd get 1. We really wanted 2 here. So there's going to be something a little bit wrong with our formula, and we're going to need to patch that. Before we can patch it, let's just gather some more data. 
So here, the previous adjustment was two. There have been one increase operations and five decrease operations. So this would tell us that the adjustment we need is negative two, right? So we're getting two plus one minus five, and we're off by five this time. So we're even further off for this one. So there's definitely a problem with our formula. And the problem with our formula is we're not accounting for the fact that when we change the most recent patch of grass, that's going to shift more, um, that's going to double, right? So when I decrease the, the current patch of grass, that's going to shift this one twice as much, right? So when I do five decrease operations here, that's subtracting 10 off of here. When I do one increase operation here, that's adding two here. So I need to account for that doubling. And in order to cap account for that doubling, I'm going to subtract off the previous grass amount. So subtract previous grass amount. And what we can see is now with this additional term, the formula will work. So here, we had the previous grass amount was negative one. So the adjustment we're calculating is going to be zero plus one minus zero minus negative one is two. That's exactly the adjustment we'd expect. Now let's apply, try to apply it in the second situation. So there's been one increase, five decreases. The adjustment we're looking for is negative seven. So the previous adjustment was two. We get one for the increase minus five for the decrease. And then we're accounting for the previous grass amount, which was five. So we're going to subtract off an additional five, which gives us a total of negative seven. So here we can see that we just have to account for the fact that uh, when we decrease or increase by the previous grass amount, so just the, the prior variable, that's going to have a doubling effect on the next variable. So if I increase by one, that increases the next variable by two. If I decrease by five, that decreases the next variable by 10. So I just wanna make sure I'm keeping track of that doubling, and now my adjustment formula will work. Coming up with formulas like this can be very challenging in the USCO exam. But my suggestion to you is if you're ever struggling with this, is just write out these uh, sample test cases, come up with a guess for how you think the formula should work, calculate both what the real value is and what your formula suggests the value should be, and try to make reasonable adjustments to your formula until those two numbers align, just like we did in this case. We took a guess at how we could calculate this adjustment, it was originally a little bit wrong. We went back to the drawing board and we decided, oh yeah, there is this extra doubling effect that we, forget, we forgot to take into account. So we, once we added in the previous grass amount, all of a sudden our adjustments were calculated correctly. This is a tricky skill to learn. It takes a lot of practice, um, but notice that in this question, even if you couldn't come up with this formula, you can still implement this runtime n squared algorithm and get significant partial credit. So don't let the partial credit opportunities on Usico pass by. This can often mean the difference between promotion and not promotion. Anyway, with that speech done, let's dive into coding this up. So we're going to keep track of several variables. Um, I've already read in the input for you here. So we've read in n, that's just the number of different n integers, and the grass array is going to store my uh, n integers, right? So this is the array that I'm trying to turn into all zeros. So the variables we want to keep track of are this adjustment variable, the number of total increases, and the total, of num total number of decrease operations. Then we're going to loop over the grass array and calculate how many adjustments we need to make. So for i in range n, uh, just looping over the, the array of length n, 
we're first going to adjust the amount of grass in slot i. So this is just adjusting the i index by adjustment. And then we're going to check, is the amount in this index positive or negative? If it's negative, we need to increase our array. If it's positive, we need to decrease our array. So case one, if grass i is negative, we're going to apply increase operations. So we're going, in, in particular, the number of increase operations we apply is just equal to the absolute value of grass i. So one way of writing this is increase is equal to increase minus grass i. The reason why we're subtracting here is because grass i has a negative value. So if I subtract off a negative value, that's the same as adding a positive value. On the other hand, if grass i is positive, then we're going to apply decrease operations. And the number of decrease operations we need is just going to be um, decrease plus grass i. Here, we're adding grass i simply because adding a positive value is, uh, turns out to be a positive value, right? So increase and decrease should both be positive values here that increase over time. They're keeping track of the total number of operations we use. Then all we have to do is apply our adjustment formula. So it's the adjustment plus the increase minus the decrease minus the grass amount. So it's just going to be adjustment is equal to adjustment minus increase, or plus increase rather, plus increase minus decrease minus grass i. And then all we have to do is print out the sum of increase and decrease. Why the sum of these two variables? Well, this stores the number of increase operations. This stores the number of decrease operations. So the sum of those two variables is going to be the sum of the total number of operations we used. So this completes the program. All right, now we have the completed code here. Let's upload it to the grading server and see if it works. So we're just going to save this file, select, and open, submit. And we can see that we're going to pass all of the test cases. So let me move me out of the way. And there we go. All test cases passing. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next contest. Bye-bye.